Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Rye, and this is my partner, Wicked. And we are not academics, but we are well-versed and experienced in several lifestyles, including BDSM and polyamory. We host discussion groups in Los Angeles for the last three years. We've done about a dozen, and uh, whether they be in private loft spaces or dungeons or sex toy shops or our, our own home. And so we've gotten uh, a wealth of panelists and experience under our belts of hearing many stories about this. And today we're going to be talking about the intersection of BDSM and polyamory. Um, our dynamic is such that we are an open poly couple. We currently uh, have a, a style of communication where we, we act with implied consent and then we inform each other either during or after or before, whatever the case may be, uh, the, the rule is, is that nothing's a secret. And uh, typically, our harshest rule is that before we have sex again, we want to know what has happened sexually outside of the relationship, especially regarding a new partner. If it's an ongoing current partner, it's implied that that's happening and we're already aware. On the BDSM side, we're functionally egalitarian feminists, the two of us, but there is a DS dynamic there uh, with myself as the dominant and her as the submissive. Sometimes it's more of a top-bottom type situation, but typically it's, uh, it's dom-sub. And just to clarify, let's make sure we all n agree and know what BDSM stands for. Uh, bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, sadomasochism. And within that, how does that intersect with polyamory? Um, one of the things that we love to do is explore the lexicon. And in the BDSM lexicon, you've got titles such as top, bottom, dom, sub, master, slave. In a lot of polyamorous couples, you have a lexicon of primary, secondary, tertiary. Maybe you have relationship anarchy where there is no necessary uh, hierarchy to the, to the dynamic, and then as those cross over, what happens next? Um, I think that this lexicon is really powerful for understanding what you're getting yourself into and making sure that you can find partners that fit within that dynamic, but I don't think that the lexicon should be your own prison. You know, it's, it's really there so that you can communicate, and I don't feel that those labels are permanent. I don't think that they are uh, orientations that you're necessarily born with, think that you might go through phases of your relationship. And as, when we started out, I would say we were more in the uh, top-bottom category. And as, and as time has gone on, it's become uh, more of a dominant submissive. We've explored master-slave, but the bottom line is, what is the difference between a master and a dom, a sub and a slave, and, and within that, a top and a bottom? What are those differences, and how does it affect polyamory? The way I define a master is total power exchange, 100% control, 24-7, and a slave being the reverse of that, which is basically agreeing to have 0% control and agreeing to give that up 24-7 to the master. That is in great conflict with many of the polyamorous ideals, which is more of an egalitarianism and an equality of control. And so you're choosing to give that up. And thus, I, I think that one of the most interesting ways to explore this crossover is if you have a master, it's very difficult to have another master. How can you be in control of 100% of the power if you're literally sharing it with someone else. And I would say much of the power exchange in polyamory is more of a 50-50, where you don't just act on your own and do whatever the hell you want. You're, you tend to work these things out with your partner in more of a democratic process. And by partner, I'm implying partners in the polyamory aspect. But that, that, that hierarchy, that, that control exists in polyamory. If you are distinct, if you're creating a distinction, a primary, 
you might be implying a veto power in that distinction or giving more weight to that vote that democracy might have a three or four times power vote versus the other power uh, the other parties involved and i think there's an, an inherent power exchange in that that you've agreed upon you've given each other a certain amount of power but in the master slave relationship it is a sole female male or other gendered master once you change that maybe you're not 24 7 but more like 24 3 you know maybe you're 90 percent power maybe you're somehow less than 100 percent 24 7 now you're getting into the category of dom of dominant rather than necessarily master and i think that as you explore those, there's no inherent issue in having two dominant partners. It's, it's now going to be an issue of negotiation, though, as you look at the differences in the hierarchies. Maybe you have, let's say in our dynamic for a moment, let's, let's consider that this is a primary polyamory relationship, just for this example, and then there is a new dominant that's entered her life, which has which, happened. which has happened and you desire to have happen again. Mm -hmm. And that partner and I have to have some kind of agreement, even if it's through her. You know, maybe I can't give up any power. And so a master might be at direct conflict with who we are as a couple. Uh, that is personally one of my biggest fears in our polyamorous open relationship is that she might meet a partner someday who mesmerizes her to such a degree that she wants to serve him or her to that extent. Probably not her, but it could be. Never say never, but you know. The only, the only way I could picture it if it was a non-sexual uh, master, mistress. Sure. Could happen. Yeah, that could happen. And just that the nature of master slave is so, deep on the psyche that it could, their relationship could instantly change ours. And then we would be in conflict of the primary uh, uh, status that we give each other, um, for lack of a better word. Uh, typically, we avoid that term because of the powers that it typically grants. Um, primaries typically have veto power of some kind. Uh, we avoid that like the plague. Uh, we tend to trust each other to make our own choices. And that's not an aspect of our dominant submissive relationship whatsoever. She is completely free to do as she pleases with the partners that she chooses. My biggest rule is I don't want that relationship to affect us. And that's why a potential master relationship in her life is my biggest fear because of the loss that I could uh, perceive myself to be experiencing. What are your fears when it comes to my polyamory and my other partners and my BDSM? Well, as you can probably tell from what Rai has described, um, I am not the type of uh, true submissive, as they would as they would put it. We are more uh, more equals. Um, we have our times when we are more uh, dominant and submissive. But uh, I think that my biggest fear in our relationship is if he meets someone who is that true submissive and brings out the, you know, a true dom side in him and, and causes him to value that true dom sub relationship more. What do you mean by true dom? I'm talking more closer to the 24-7, mm -hmm. closer to the master slave. Okay. Or even possibly, you know, being a master slave and um, situation. The master slave relationships that I've encountered uh, among the LA BDSM scene, that's what we're a part of, uh, they're concerned all day long from the moment one wakes up to the next moment of waking up going to sleep with the collar or uh, some other symbol of the 24-7 relationship. It's a level of detail that I just don't care about. <laughs> it's of no concern to me. In fact, it's a hassle 
to be worried about all that. So maybe, maybe if someone of that ilk was involved in your life, I'd be indifferent. Maybe. Because of all the details that they would want you to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. But there have been times where you've, where you've uh, considered it and thought about it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So it's not like a, you know, like a never situation there. 